welcome back to my garden. It's a very fun day today because today is a planting day and it's a big planting day. I was really excited this morning. I woke up and I kind of jumped out of bed because I knew I was going to be planting a lot of plants today. And as someone who came from a pretty small property that was very filled, <laughs> very overfilled with a lot of plants to be able to have more plants to plant this season in my garden is just really exciting. So I have about 14 good size perennials to plant over here. I am in the orchard, but I'm in the, the front of the orchard over by the mound and the espalier and the shade garden. I have two different varieties. One of them is denim and lace Russian sage, which I am a huge, huge fan of because the purple color to me looks like it's like a shimmering purple. I just think it is so lovely. It's 32 inches tall, 38 inches wide. Wide. The only drawback, the only drawback to this plant is I can't touch it. My skin just reacts to it. It just doesn't like it. Let me know if any anyone else has the same reaction to it. It's just anything else I'm totally fine with, but this plant is the one plant that I can't handle. Um, but I'm still gonna, I'm still gonna plant it. <laughs> I'll just wear gloves and long sleeves. So I have, um, five, six, seven of them that I'm going to be planting over here along the fence. Let me just show you this tree. I don't know what tree this is. This is my neighbor's tree, but it's hanging over and it's blooming beautifully. It's so pretty. I mean, is it an apple? It almost looks like an apple. I have no idea, but it's gorgeous, gorgeous. I'll keep you all updated onto whatever tree I figure that <laughs> figure out it is. Anyway, I have the Romantica ball ground rose right here that I planted last fall, and that's gorgeous as well. This one's gonna get about six feet tall. So I am planting the Russian sage kind of all along and kind of around that Romantica ball gown. I think it's gonna look really pretty. And then I'm gonna finish it off with a Nyphophia. And this Nyphophia is the hot and cold, Pyromania hot and cold. It's the ombre one, and it is gorgeous. 36 inches tall, 30 inches wide. I'm going to do four of them kind of around here. And I have to say this one, the hot and cold variety, was my top choice for this garden bed way over here. This was the first garden bed I planted in the orchard. I knew, oh my gosh, can, can you see the hummingbird on the Nyphophia? Oh, it just flew away. Oh, there is a hummingbird that's just going crazy over here every time I walk away. Can you see it? I don't know how to zoom in on my new camera. <laughs> Gosh. Anyway, so this was the first garden bed that I planted when I was here. Um, and I knew I wanted to do the combination of orange and purple because I saw that at Walter's Gardens, which is where all these perennials are from. And it was stunning. It was beautiful. But I wanted, originally, I wanted this Cat's Pajamas Nepeta mixed with the hot and cold Nyphophia. But they were out of the hot and cold Nyphophia by that time of the year. So instead, I decided to go with the orange blaze knife orange blaze nyphophia and at first i was kind of a little disappointed like oh man but i'm so glad i planted the orange blaze because it's so beautiful it's such a saturated color and that compared with the purple Oh my goodness, I just love it. It's gorgeous. So now, so, since I planted that, I still had the urge to plant the hot and cold Nyphophia. So that's why I have these kind of up here. So I am going to plant four of the Nyphophia, hot and cold Nyphophia right there, and then another grouping of three right over here by my iceberg roses, just to kind of like like cross the path, tie it in over here. And then I have a lot of plans for a bunch of different annuals kind of all over here in this bed. So very exciting. I have my auger. I have not much else. I don't really need much. I have starter fertilizer. Oh, and then I literally have spent the last 20 minutes looking around for a measuring tape and I cannot find it anywhere, absolutely anywhere. I'm sure it's somewhere around here in this garden. I'm sure I left it because I usually take out a measuring tape for spacing plants just to make sure that I'm not under spacing or over spacing. Well, 
Now I have a tomato steak. <laughs> this tomato steak is 34 inches, so at least that gives me a pretty good idea of how far apart to plant these perennials. So let's get going. spaced out. I think they look really good. Once they all fill in, this is the minimum spacing for all of them. That means that they're all going to touch. And so they're just going to touch on either side. If you do the maximum spacing, then that's going to be a little bit of gap in between each plant. But I kind of wanted it to be like a drift of the Russian sage right here, almost spilling a little bit over the sidewalk the beautiful Romantica ball gown rose behind it, and then a pop of Nyphophia just to add a little bit of interest. It's going to be so fun. I'm so, I'm just so excited. And these are going to grow pretty quickly. They're going to get good, like, like full size pretty soon. So oh, it's just, everything's looking so good now that it's all leafing out. When we moved here, we moved here in August. And so it was like the dead of summer, everything was looking kind of tired and then boom, it went into winter. And so it's just really, really fun to start seeing this garden in the spring because it's looking so good. What's a day digging in my garden without running into some hidden patio? I mean, can you guys see that? Probably not. It is a square patio paver hidden under here. It's just, oh my goodness. And you know what? It's fine. I don't want to deal with it. I'm just going to move this hole over a little bit. But I do have to say my soil is looking so, so good. Look at these holes. So I did what's called the no-till method. I've talked to you guys about it. Basically, this piece of property had not been touched in so long. And there were so many weeds and the, the soil, it like, I had to use like a digging stick to get through it. It was so, oh my gosh, it was so hard. So I put cardboard down, like a layer of cardboard, and then I put about six inches of compost. And then I just let it sit over the winter. And the cardboard has completely disintegrated and the compost has mixed in with the soil and it is gorgeous. It is so gorgeous. There's so many worms. Is that a worm? No, that's a stick. <laughs> There's so many worms. Um, now, it didn't totally get rid of all the weeds, which I never expected it to. Um, this whole garden bed was covered with Bermuda grass. What it did do is it did tamp down the weeds so that I could get kind of a uh, under it under control basically you know i'm probably gonna have to spray a weed an herbicide eventually right now i've just been hand picking all of it which has been fine but um i never expected the no-till method to completely take care of all my weeds because that would have been magic and i feel like we all would be doing the no-till method but i did want the no-till method for the quality of my soil and it worked really 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 well and i'm just telling you all this just so that if you wanted to try the method just know that it worked for me now Everybody's garden's different. There's many right ways to prep a bed and do it. Um, you just got to experience with your own way. But the way that I did it, every hole that I am digging, I am so, so happy with how it looks. I'm so happy with it. I just had to tell you all that. All right, let's keep going.
right, they're all in. That was relatively easy. No issues other than running into that random patio paver that I just left in there. It looks so good. It's getting me so excited. It's making me want to plant more perennials today, but I'm holding myself back. <sighs> it's just, it's very, very exciting. So let me show you, and then I will go over a little bit of care for these plants. So you can see I have one, two, three, four of the hot and cold Nifofia. I think that that's going to look really, really pretty there. And then my big drift of denim and lace Russian sage right here. It's going to grow in. I'm still going to plant some little things kind of in between it, but the main, the main show or the main um, star of this area is going to be the Russian sage with the Romantica ball gown rose in the back. These these are my uh, summer drummer alliums. They did all right. I've got one coming. I got another one coming up over there, but that's about it. I think they needed more water, honestly. I don't know. Maybe too much water? I don't know. I'm not too worried about them. I'm more focusing on the perennials, and I'll worry about the bulbs later. And then I have these three over here. It's just kind of a little grouping to tie in over that way. And again, like I said, I have plans for a whole bunch of annuals kind of all around here as well. So for the Russian sage, Russian sage is so easy. I mean, it's like a piece of cake. Like you don't have to worry about it. The only thing you need to worry about is making sure that it doesn't get too much fertilizer and doesn't get too much water. Um, if it gets too much water, it, it can die, it can rot out. And if it gets too much fertilizer, it can flop over. If you see these flopping right there, that's because I accidentally broke the stems with my hose <laughs> in the back when I was watering. So ignore that. And then I just, I didn't want to pull it off because like I said, I uh, my skin reacts to the Russian sage, but this should be really easy. You can cut these down to about six inches in the spring so all the new growth will come up, and that is what I did with my Russian, Russian sage over there, and it's starting to flush out, and it's looking really, really good, and it will keep its blooms for so long. So this is the denim and lace variety from Proven Winners. It's a little bit more short. Um, it's like two to three feet tall, and it has stronger stems so it won't flop over like the regular variety. Um, there's another kind, oh, I, I forget the name right now, but I'll put it on the screen, that's supposed to have even darker purple leaves, which I really want to get in my garden. But I'll start with the denim and lace because I feel like they're just they're just so beautiful. I love them. And then we have the Nifofia over here. The hot and cold Nifofia is just so pretty. So this plant will... Um, it will spread by rhizomes and you can divide it. So you can propagate it. But when you propagate this one, you don't wanna cut the whole root ball in half like you normally do. You just wanna pull the babies off the edge, kind of like you do with bearded iris. Um, so every few years, just to prevent overcrowding, you wanna make sure that you take care of that with your nifofia. And then in spring, again, you can cut the foliage down to just a couple inches for fresh foliage. I did not do that on those that uh, this year because they were so fresh and they were so new. I kind of just went in and I took out the old foliage, like I hand picked out the old foliage, which was totally overkill and <laughs> totally extra, but I just didn't want to cut them down because they because they had blooms early on in January. Um, but if you have more established plants, cutting them back in the spring, probably right around the same time as you cut back the Russian sage, would be really good. And then they respond really well to deadheading. So let me bring you over here. I'll show you. I know I have a ton that need to be deadheaded over here. They will continue blooming if you deadhead them. And what they'll do is the, the flowers will start fading on the bottom first. You can see this one. It'll start fading on the bottom first, and then you'll have the newer flowers. And then eventually it gets to the end. Here's some sad ones that need to be deadheaded. And so then I'll just come in here and I'll just kind of cut them down, kind of just like that. And then they'll keep shooting up new ones of these. They're also called torch lily. Um, I always call them red hot poker or nifofia, but they're also called torch lily, which is like a perfect expl explanation of it or a perfect description of it. If you can see really closely, these flowers are made up of a whole bunch of these little tubular buds which is 
perfect for the hummingbirds. I mean, this this is the shape of flowers that hummingbirds love. They love getting their little beaks in there and drinking the nectar. So that's why these are so, so perfect uh, for hummingbirds and for bees and all that kind of stuff. So I just need to come in. I need to deadhead all of my orange blaze ones. My denim and lace Russian sage is looking really good. That should start growing and we are good. We are in business. And then here's one more quick look at this garden bed. This has my cardoons and my sweet, sweet romance lavender. So there's my cardoon seedlings. They're gonna start growing really fast because this artichoke, this was like a third to a quarter of the size of this and it just, just shot up. So I'm, I have a feeling these cardoon seedlings are gonna come up really, really quickly. And then to have the lavender in between those, it's gonna be, it's gonna be beautiful. So this one, pretty good. Over here, this garden bed looking pretty good. I just, I'm just gonna keep going with my perennials, planting my perennials, and then once I get my annuals in, game on, you guys, game on. Real quick, I wanna show you all my Ville de Lyon clematis is blooming, which is so fun. When I bought it and planted it, it had a bud on it, and I've been coming out and checking it every morning to see if it's opened up, and it finally did. Look at her, isn't she beautiful? Oh man, this is gorgeous. So this Ville de Leon clematis is going to get tall. It's gonna get like 12 feet tall per fanula. And this one, she loves this one. This is actually the one that she has on her billboard. She has some billboards in Petaluma for Cottage Gardens of Petaluma. This is the one that she has. And I can see why, because it's gorgeous. I love it. So everything is so fun. It's starting to bloom. Every day I come out here and I, I see something else. I see a hummingbird, I see bees, I see blooms, it's, I see growth. It's just, it's really fun. So I hope you all enjoyed this and I hope you all have a chance to get in your garden today.